All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for being here on Wednesday night. It's going to be a good time in the Lord. I want to thank everybody for being here. I also want to just uh, thank Brother Patrick and Sister Cecilia for bringing our, our dinner tonight. Let's give them a hand. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I want to uh, also uh, just uh, bring up some, some prayer petitions. Uh, Sister Sandra, uh, she's a regular here. She's always, uh, always here on time. And we want to lift her up. We want to lift up her family. Her daughter and, and the grandkids, uh, they, they have come down with COVID. So I, I know it's how, that, how that feels. I remember hearing that, that my wife got COVID. And uh, I mean, I just, my heart just dropped. And this was when it first first started uh, coming on the scenes last year. And then my son got COVID. Well, my oldest son got COVID. So, but thank God they have both recovered and, and they're doing very well. So um, we're gonna pray for for her family tonight. We're gonna lift them up. Does anybody else have a prayer request before we get started, Sister D? Yes. We're praying for complete restoration for Sister D. Every every Wednesday we pray, right? And we're gonna pray again this Wednesday. We're believing God for that miracle. Uh, anyone else have a, have a need or a petition? Uh, yes. I just want one for our, uh, the pastors because I'm sure that they always get um, attacked. So we pray for all our pastors. Lifting up our leaders and our yes. pastors. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. We're going to lift up uh, all our, our leadership and our pastors. Anyone else have a, have a need or a petition they'd like to come before the Lord with? No? Okay. Um, Louis, can you can you lift us up? Lift us up uh, go to the Lord with, for us in prayer. We're gonna lift up Sister Sandra, Sister D, lift up the, the pastors of the church, and then all the all the ministers that are ministering here. Let's let's pray for all the ministers in our city. Sister Sandra, Sister Sandra and, and her family, her, her her daughter and her grandkids came down with COVID. Sister D, we're praying for full recovery for her, and uh, and we're praying also for our pastors. All right. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. Um, thank you, Lord. Uh, Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And, uh, we lift up uh, Sister Sandra's uh, family to you, Lord. We lift them up in the name of Jesus, Lord. We ask for complete healing from the top of their head to the bottom of their yes. skulls, Lord. Heal them yes. from the inside out, Lord. Heal them like only you could heal somebody, yes. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Since we were healed by the stripes that you endured on the cross, yes, Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus. And we just speak it into existence yes, and we just God. declare it in Sister uh, Sandra's life and her whole family's life, her whole family, Lord, to protect them and to keep your hedges of protection around them, Lord, at all times, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray right now for Sister D, a faithful person that comes over here, a sister of ours that comes over here every week and she comes to church yes, and, and she's just faithfully serving and giving, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we just ask for her to be healed from the top yes, of her God. crown to the bottom of her feet, from the inside out. Thank you. For, her, for you to heal her heart, soul, mind, and spirit, Thank Lord. Jesus. And, and for you to restore her, her whatever, you know what she needs, Lord. Right. We don't know what you know, Lord. We just ask for you to be right. enough in the name of Jesus, Lord. And for her healing to be upon her, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And uh, we just lift up all our pastors right now, each one of them, Lord. Fill them up with the words Hallelujah. to inspire us every weekend when they, when they yes, preach, God. Lord. And, and keep them safe, Lord. Yes. Uh, place your heads of protection around them at all times, Lord, and equip them with the full armor of God, Lord, to protect their mind, soul, spirit, and body, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I just lift up the rest of the church to you, Lord, all the ministries and all the yes. brothers and sisters that come here, Lord. We just lift them up to you in the name of Jesus, and we ask for you to keep your heads of protection around them and their family, Lord, in this time of coronavirus, Lord. We just lift up our president and our vice president and all the yes, leaders God. of the United States, Lord, and our government. That you just protect them and be with them, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lead them not into temptation, but deliver them from evil, Lord. Yes. We just ask for, for, for a speedy recovery on anybody in our church that's sick right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and you just heal them, Lord, right now in Jesus' name, Lord. I just pray for, for a good Bible study and for, for the Holy Spirit to arise in each one of us and, and for us to be led by the Spirit, Lord, and, and not by the flesh, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you.
my heart, one more thing I want to add. I just feel this in my heart. Father, I pray for every person in our church, Lord, that, that has a business. God, during this time that finances are tight, I pray that you would bless them abundantly, God. I pray that you would open up the floodgates of heaven as they give. They're giving in faith, God, of themselves, Lord Jesus. As they put provide for their families, God, I pray, Lord, that they bring the tithe in faithfully, God, and you would double, triple, quadruple, God. Bless them sevenfold, Lord Jesus, in all of their dealings, God. Everything that they're facing, everything they're going through, God, we speak that blessing over the families with businesses right now. And for those that are lacking, God, those that need a job today, God, I pray, Lord, that you would place favor. There will be 10 persons with the same qualifications, but God, there's favor on that person that you have your hand upon, Lord, and they will get that position. Close every door except for the right one, Lord, that they need to walk through. In the name of Jesus, I speak these things into existence. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, Lord. God is faithful. Amen. So tonight, tonight we're, we're looking at a study, and I call it Come Down From That Tree. That's what I'm calling this study, Come Down From That Tree. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. We do have food uh, uh, in the back. If you uh, help yourself, uh, we have sandwiches, we have coffee in the back we have uh, cookies and and uh, all kinds of drinks so help yourself you are welcome to participate in the in the food Luke 19 verse 1 through 10 Luke 19 verse 1 through 10 I know we've been talking a lot about people that are obscure in the Bible that you don't really hear about but tonight I felt like sharing a story about somebody that if you were in Sunday school at one time or another, you probably sang a song about Zacchaeus, right? The short man that was in the tree. So tonight we're going to talk about Zacchaeus, but we're going to look at some, some uh, insights into this portion of scripture that you probably did not know. And we want to we want to see how we can apply that in our life today and to those people that we come in contact with. So we're looking at Luke chapter 19, verse 1 through 10. Luke 19, verse 1 through 10. Uh, ben, can you read that for us, those 10 verses, please? Luke 19, verse 1. Yeah, 19, verse 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this began and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now, I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. So the son of man came to seek and save and to save the lost. Amen. That's so powerful. Thank you, Ben. Amen. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Wow, isn't that awesome? Where would we be without Jesus? Where would we be? I, I often heard people, um, years ago I was in trouble and I was, I was, uh, I had part of my conditions of probation were to go attend some classes. And, and we had to go and say in the class that we were the thing that we were dealing with before we said anything. And I, I just didn't feel right saying this. But I often heard people say, I, I found God here or I found God there. Like we could say, hey, I found God at Waterburger, or I found God at HEB on aisle 15. Uh, the thing is that the Bible says it's not us that find God, it's God that finds us. Amen. That God that seeks us out. Think about that just for a moment. Because the person that he found that day was named Zacchaeus. The Bible says a couple of things about him. Uh, it says that 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 he was a chief tax collector and was very wealthy. 
okay kind of like the modern day IRS but there was a little bit of difference there because of this he was a Jew that the Romans placed there to collect money for them but this was the thing about what the Jews what the Romans were doing there was a certain amount of tax that was owed in the city so because he was wealthy this man will approach the Roman government and say how much tax is owed in this town Let's say, for example, a journey to the cross church, you owe a thousand dollars a month. So what he would do is he would pay the thousand dollars up front. So anything extra he collected was not part of the tax was for his pockets only. So not only was he a tax collector, but he was the chief tax collector. So he was. He, he was he was a cheater, but he was he was not only a, a, just a regular tax collector But he was the chief tax collector that meant that he was he was in charge of several cities around this area So think about that. He was responsible for collecting. He had already paid it up front But anything extra he was he was taxing his own people now there's a scripture found in uh, the book of Matthew the book of Matthew chapter 18 verse 17 this is talking about they're dealing with the sin in the church that's what it's talking about so uh, if they don't want to listen that's what Jesus Jesus is speaking he says that people don't want to listen and he, let me read it to you it says again truly I tell you if any of two of you on earth agree about okay I'm sorry I'm reading the reading the wrong scripture Matthew uh, 18 17 if they still review, refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. This is Jesus talking. So guess what? We can honestly say that tax collectors in those days were hated. Even today. Even today. <laughs> people don't like the IRS, right? You don't want, that's my money, right? That's my money. So so uh, they were they were taking advantage of the people not only just any people but his people the jews because he himself the bible just said he was a son of abraham so guess what he was a fellow jew yet no one liked him no one liked him no one wanted anything to do with him no one did so let's go on it says not only did, was he a tax collector, not only was he cheating his own people, but the Bible says he was a short man. He was a short man. So the average height in those days, according to our, uh, the findings of archaeologists in that time period, was about 5'5". Five five. That was the average height. So most of us will be giants there today. So... If you could think the average height is 5'5", five five. we're thinking about this man being about between maybe 5 foot and 5'2". Five you know, very, very short man. So, very short man, short in stature. But something happened in this man's life because people talked. People talked and he heard about the name of Jesus. How many know that it is very important to share Jesus everywhere we go? Everywhere we go. You know that, right, Joshua? Yeah. Yes. It's very important to share Jesus. Why? People, you might think they're not listening, but guess what? People are listening. People are listening. Not only are they listening, but they're watching. But they're watching. So be very careful. Don't go in and cuss at anybody with a G1 hat on, okay? Because they want to say, or have your JTC mask and you're there doing bad stuff. No, don't do that, please. Don't do that. Okay, so we got to be an example everywhere we go because we don't know who's listening. So guess what? Zacchaeus listened and Zacchaeus heard so much that it stirred up in his heart. The Bible says, that he ran ahead of the crowd because everywhere that Jesus went there a crowd was there why because he was healing he was uh, uh, he was ministering to the people so crowds gathered around where Jesus was so here was Jesus coming into this town and all of a sudden this man runs ahead of the crowd 
He can't see because he's short in stature. So he says, you know what? I'm going to climb up this tree. I'm going to climb up this tree. Look at, the, look at this man's perseverance. Look at this man's determination. Because you know what? Sometimes it's going to take everything we got to get to Jesus. It's going to take everything we got. And, and, and sometimes it, 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 it comes because we are facing difficulties in our life. We're going through something in our life that we don't understand why we're facing it. But you know what? We know in our hearts that we got to get to Jesus no matter what. Now this man, in the world's view, he had it all. Why? Because of his wealth. But how many know being wealthy is not, does not answer the loneliness in your heart? They hated him. They didn't want nothing to do with him. So you know what? He had no friends. He was lonely. He was lonely. I remember a time I was ministering at, a, a, at the church I grew up in. I was going around after church and I was inviting people to come to church. So I went into a high rise, kind of like the high rise we have right here. Some of you live in. And I, I found an elderly lady and we started to talk. And she invited me to come and, and sit with her and talk. So as we were sitting, she says, I want you to hear something. I said, okay. And we paused and she goes, listen. So we paused about a minute. She goes, did you hear that? And I was like, thinking, like what is up with this lady? You know, what's she going to do? So she said, did you hear that? I said, I didn't hear anything. She goes, exactly. She goes, imagine being like that for a week. Imagine being like that for a year. Imagine being like that for five years. Not hearing anything from anybody because there's nobody around. And tears started coming down her face. Man, it broke my heart. So we would, I would go and just say, you know what, we have a church that you could come. You don't have to live like this. There's a community. Guess what? Community is so important. Community is so important. Why? Because there's so many people that need to be around people of God. Why? Because we are the light of the world. We're the light of the world. People go to bars. I know people when, back in the day that they would go to bars no matter what. I don't care if it was raining or cold, they were there at the bar. Everybody remember Cheers? When Norm walked in, they'd say, here we go, Norm. You know, because everybody knew. I want to go to a place where everybody knows my name, right? You know what? That has to be JTC. That has to be our church. Where everybody knows your name. Where everybody knows that you're important. Where you're important to everybody. Uh, just a quick commercial. We do have food in the back if you're hungry. Help yourself. We have sandwiches from Subway. We have we have drinks, coffee. Help yourself. So, yes, sir. Doesn't it say that we're living stones to a temple? Yes. Living stones to a temple. Yes, and Christ is that cornerstone. He is the he is the cornerstone. The cornerstone was the stone that was set first to build the but building. One of us together is a stone building towards the temple, right? We we all are part of the community. So guess what? In family, because we're family, right? right? Do you have disagreements in family? You're going to have disagreements, right? Mm -hmm. So guess what? Because you get mad, don't mean you got to leave. Talk. We just read a scripture here between dif disagreements, right? Back in Matthew. We just read a scripture about disagreements. And it said, you know what? Take it, take it to that person. Talk to them. And then if y'all don't, don't figure it out, take it to the church. You know, don't go outside to the dumpster, okay? I always, I always uh, joke around, let's go to the dumpster, we'll work it out behind the dumpster. No, we don't want you to work it out behind the dumpster. But we talk to each other, and if there's differences, we settle it. Why? Because we're part of the body of Christ. And people need to know about Jesus through our life. That's, we, we, are, we are probably the only Jesus they'll see. Some people will never step foot in the church, but they'll look, they'll look at you. And they'll talk to you. And you know what? They're going to see that difference. Because when Jesus comes into your life, things are going to change in your life. You're not going to see the same things that you used to see. You're not going to talk the same way you used to talk. You're not going to walk the same way you used to walk. Why? Because Jesus came into our lives and into our hearts. Amen. What a beautiful thing. So that day there was there was Zacchaeus, the short man in stature, a chief captain tax collector, not just an ordinary tax collector, but he had clout and the Bible says he was very wealthy, cheating by cheating his own people, by cheating his own people. 
Uh, Luke chapter 19, verse 10, if you're following along with us. Luke 19, verses 1 through 10. I'm sorry. Luke 19, 1 through 10. So he wanted to see who Jesus was. He was short. So in verse 4, he says, so he ran ahead of the crowd. Sometimes we got to get away from the crowd. Sometimes we got to get away from the crowd because you know what? The crowd knew who he was. But did he listen to the crowd? No, he did not listen to the crowd because he had something in his heart. He was going to see who he came to see, and that was Jesus. Sometimes the crowd is going to lead us astray. Sometimes the crowd is there to discourage you and to put you down. You will never own the, your own business. You will never have what it takes to do what you are called to do. You will always be that way. Lies from the pit of hell. Man, you, you're going to that church over there? Oh, good luck. I give you a month. I give you a, oh, you'll be back soon. I'll, I'll save your place right here with us. You'll be back soon, sooner or later. You know, I got your beer waiting right here. I'll put salt on top of it, stick a lime in it. Too. Right there, right for you. Okay, you know what? How many were told that? How many were told that? But you know what? Sometimes we've got to separate ourselves from that crowd, just like he did. He was determined in his heart. I got to see Jesus and I got to do everything I can because as soon as that, that crowd gets here, I'm not going to be able to see him. So he had a plan and he was determined. So there was an older man climbing a tree. Wow. I don't know about you, but I'm 51. I can't climb a tree. <laughs> can't do it no more. I used to climb. I used to not even climb. I used to just jump over the fence. You know, believe it or not, I wasn't always this this healthy. Okay, okay, I'm I'm fat, but I'm the good kind of fat. Amen. Okay, so uh, he had to get away from the crowd, and he climbed up a tree, a sycamore fig tree, to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. Verse five. When Jesus reached the spot, because you know what, Jesus always knows where he's going. Think about this. There was an entire crowd. An entire crowd. Uh, the Bible is not specific how many people were there. But Jesus always knows where he's going. And he looked up into that tree. And he said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay in your house today. Whoa. Everybody knew who he was talking about. Because everybody hated this guy. Yet Jesus said, come down here. I must stay at your, not I got to stay. He says, I got, I, I must stay. At, this is Jesus talking. Wow. I must stay at your house. Verse six. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Look at what happens. Here comes a crowd, right? Here comes the crowd. Verse seven. All the people saw this and began to mutter. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Talking about Jesus. Because you know what? The crowd is going to talk bad. The crowd is going to discourage. The crowd is going to put an obstacle there. But they didn't know about Jesus. See, there's a lot of people in this world that think they know about God. Oh, I got God figured out. But you know what? They really don't know Jesus. They haven't met him personally. They haven't asked him into their heart. They have been around him. They have, they have heard about him, but they haven't invited him into their heart. And there's sometimes you could be in church for years and not know about Jesus. Just like these people. Because in our mind, we have, a, we have in our mentality who Jesus should be hanging out with and who he should not be hanging out with. Right? Jesus shouldn't be around that crowd over there. Jesus shouldn't be about, not those people over there. Not the Floreses, the Floreses, not the Garcias. The Garcias are bad, you know. Those people, that, that family is crazy. The Martinez family, oh God. Do not hang around with the Martinez's. They don't, they, there's nothing good about that family. But guess what? Jesus came to seek and save that which is lost. You know what? That is hope. That is hope for me, and that is hope for you tonight. I don't know what you're going through if you're watching tonight on, on YouTube, 
But you know what? Jesus is bringing hope straight to your living room, straight to your phone, straight to your car, wherever you're at and you're watching this video. There is hope for you. You know what? It's not over for you. You might be the most hated person. Your family probably doesn't want anything to do with you. I know we don't have those people in our family, right? I know it's not in your family. You don't have that one brother that nobody wants to hang out with or that one sister that everybody's kind of like, eh, just don't call her no more, you know? Don't, don't invite her no more. You know, no, no, no. Guess what? Jesus, he had to stay at his house. And the people muttered and the people began to talk bad, saying he's hanging out with sinners. Look at verse 8. But Zacchaeus stood up and he said, Lord, Lord, look, Lord. He said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now. Okay, wow. Something has happened to this man. See, see, when Jesus came, not only was Jesus there, but who, who was hanging out with Jesus? Who was always with Jesus? Twelve guys, right? The disciples. Guess what? Among those twelve, there was a guy that had similar things in common with Zacchaeus. Anybody know his name? Uh, uh, Matthew. Oh. Matthew was a tax collector. Oh, yeah, Matthew. Remember? And I don't know about you, but when you're at the, at the house or you're sitting at a table or you're sitting and those times they sat on the floor and they were talking, you know what? He says, you know what? I, I was in your shoes. I know what you're going through. I know what you're facing. I know what you're feeling because you know what? I felt it that day, that day when Jesus said, to me, leave everything and follow me. And I did. I left it all. The Bible's not specific and the Bible's not clear in that. But it does say that he went to his house. Guys, it is so important for us to hang out with each other and to fellowship. Amen. And to share with each other what God has done in your life. Because you know what? There's so many people that feel I can't go to church because how many people have told Pastor George, if I show up at your church, the church will burn down. Lightning's going to strike your church. Right, right Pastor George? Man, and these are police officers. They're not criminals like what I used to be in. Some of you, these are police officers that are saying this. You know, so guess what? Guess what? God can change that one person. Yes. In verse 8, he, he kind of does a confession, right? As soon as he's in front of Jesus, he, he's, he knows he's in front of the Son of God. Or because, uh, and he, he kind of starts confessing to, to Christ. I'll give, him half, uh, I'll give uh, my half my wealth to the poor, Lord. If I cheated people on their attacks, I'll give them back four times as much. So he starts, he knows that, you know, everything that's, all that greed has to start to leave him because he's in the presence of God. Something has happened to him. Think about this. Does anybody know the meaning of the name Zacchaeus? In the Hebrew, it means we can be uh, to be made pure. To be made pure or innocent. Or innocent. Uh, we've talked about people's names here in past studies, right? And how that affected their life. But this man was not living up to his name, right? What happened to Jacob when he wrestled with God? He was, God changed his name. Why? Because his name meant trickster. His name meant swindler, a cheat. And God changed his name to prince. You know what? God, I told you this a few weeks ago. We're, we're, we're not tadpoles becoming frogs. We're frogs becoming princes, princes and princesses. God is going to totally transform and change our lives when he comes in contact with us. He will totally do that in our life. So, so Jesus had to stay with him and Jesus had to be around him. His name meant pure, his name meant innocent, but he was a tax collector. He didn't live up to his name. It was no secret that Zacchaeus gained his wealth off of the backs of his neighbors and off of the backs of his fellow countrymen. Even in Luke chapter 19, verse 8, it says this. Uh, it says, John the Baptist said, says that these tax collectors can make things right by simply being honest about in their business. Zacchaeus does this after encountering Jesus. And he stood up and he said, Lord, I'll give half my goods. 
I will give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man in false accusation, I will restore him four times or fourfold. Listen to the confession of this man. You know what? There has to be confession that comes out of our mouth. There has to be a change that happens. That's when you know that Jesus has come into a person's life. That's when you know when Jesus has come into your life. You will not be the same man. You will not be the same woman. Why? Because you have met Jesus. And you have asked him to come into your life. There is something that happens. You cannot live the same way. You can't walk the same way. You can't think the same way. Something has changed for the better. Amen? Amen. You're being made pure just like Zacchaeus was that day. Think about this. The most hated man. The most hated man. The man that everybody knew and they like uh, they had a picture of him they threw darts at him or they they they, they had a picture of him they they had target practice they hated this man yet something happened after he met jesus after jesus reached out to him zacchaeus changed his ways and he went above because you know what in jewish law they had a certain the uh, a certain uh, limitation to do things the right way but he said, you know what? I'm going to go above it. I'm going to go above it. I'm going to have I'm going to I'm going to show radical transformation in my life. And you know what? Sometimes if God is prompting your heart, sometimes God will put it in your heart to give something crazy. I'm telling you, don't hold back. Trust God. Amen. Trust God. But what is he going to do? He's he's a wealthy man. Why is he going to give away all this stuff? Because he realized wealth wasn't about what he thought it was. Because mm -hmm. you know what? You can die rich. And where are you going to take it with you? You're not going to take it with you. There's never been a, a hearse with a U-Haul in back of it with all their stuff. Never. Never. You're not going to take your, your, your nicest pair of boots and your nicest dress and, and your nicest bag to heaven with you. You're not. It's not going with you. So you know what? He understood that. He says, you know what? I'm going to help people in this life get and better. You know what? Uh, Jesus showed love to him, and that love had such a drastic effect on him that it made the chains of the <coughs> and everything just fall off of him. Amen. And then he, to show that he was serious, he got moved to say four times as much. So if anybody's watching him, they know that, that he was really affected because he's greedy. Yes. He's known for what? Four times? Four times four time must be God. It must be. Yeah. It must be God. And, and, and that's what happens when, when, when God comes into our life and transforms us. We became the person that was so, how do they say in Spanish? Agarrao. Agarrao. And we become the person that gives the most. Gives, gives. You know what? I can't. Because when you become that person, God will continually bless your life. Why? Because you're going to give it away. He can use you to give. He can, you can be his vessel to give on this earth. Why? Because he trusts you. He, he didn't know how to accept the love that God showed. Uh, Jesus showed him a love, like accepted him, and he was shocked probably. And, and the chains fell off of everything. Not only that, but you know what? Think about this. All his life, nobody wanted to be around him. Then that day, Jesus said, I must go to your house. And that name, he called him by his name. Amen. Because Jesus him. knows Personally. you, his name, and Jesus knows your name. And Jesus knows your name. You might be feel the loneliest tonight. You might feel like nobody knows what I'm going through. You know what? Jesus knows what you're going through. Jesus knows your need tonight. Don't feel like, oh, nobody knows. Nobody knows. No, God knows. God knows. Why? Because he came to seek and save that which was lost. You know, we just looked at the parables of the lost coin. We looked at the parable of the, of the, lost, of the, the lost son. We, look, we looked at these parables a, a few weeks ago. This is why Jesus came. He, he renewed his purpose. And he told everybody about his purpose. Amen? Amen. So he understood one thing. His meaning for living was found by meeting Jesus. Just like Zacchaeus today. Jesus must visit your house. He wants to come into your house tonight. What's the first thing we do when somebody's coming over? Man, they're coming over. 
Clean it up. <laughs> Get your things in order. You throw it all into the to the to the closet, right? <laughs> right? No, nobody, nobody does that. Okay. You don't got that one room where you hide all the mess in. <laughs> or you're just like, come on into my mess. Excuse the mess. And every time you go over there, they tell you the same thing. Okay, no, 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 no. That's the first place I check is the closet. You know what? Guess what? That's that's our first inclination. I gotta get have you ever heard somebody tell you, I gotta get stuff right before I go to church? That's not biblical. Jesus comes in just the way it is. Why? Because he wants to clean it up. Amen. He wants to clean it up. We can clean it up on the outside all we can by putting on a, a nice coat, putting on nice slacks and a nice shirt. But you know what? Inside it's all messy where nobody can see. But Jesus sees even to the places that you don't want anybody to see. Right. Yet, yet he still wants to come and see you. Wow. Wow, the places that nobody wants to see. And you know what? When they come in, don't you get like, oh man, I ain't cleaned that like in two days. I better clean that. You know, stuff starts happening in your life. Starts, stuff starts getting, the first thing that, God is a God of order, right? Things start changing in your life and you start to clean up because God is doing it inside of your life. And because he's doing something in the inside, it comes out on the outside. Amen. Jesus, Jesus came in and Zacchaeus found his meaning. He had no requirements for him to come visit. He didn't say, did he say, I want to go to your house, but get rid of all this stuff you got there. You know, no. Those of you who don't know, I told this story before. I went to Pastor George's house before he was, a, he lived in the Billy Mitchell Apartments. When I went into his room, he had a big old picture of Scarface. <laughs> so our pastor had a picture of Scarface. You know, yes, he did. And he was a police officer. And he still liked Scarface. I don't know why. I was like, what does not add up? <laughs> what is going on here? But you know what? One day, God started getting a hold of Pastor George. Didn't you go and burn all your CDs? I did. I threw my yeah. Right? He had, what do you have? Rob Zombie, and Metallica. And, and he says, I don't want this anymore. Because I was seeing one didn't have any kids. And then Rose came in his life and changed her. You know what? Stuff started to happen because you start to look around after Jesus. After Jesus left, he was like, you know what? This stuff don't belong. This stuff doesn't belong in my life. And you know what? Nobody tells you. Here at this church, we don't we don't go and hammer you because I back in the day I would hammer you. <laughs> I was known for that. I would bring that. I would would I bring the hammer, George? Mm -hmm. Man, I would bring it right to you and put it right between your eyes. I would. And and you know what? I said, you know what, Holy Spirit, you're gonna bring it. I'm gonna preach. I'm gonna give them the love of God. I'm gonna preach them the love of God because you're gonna come into their heart. Because I was doing it just to fix them. If Pablo, when you and your brothers were around me, would y'all cuss? They wouldn't cuss, and if, if they if somebody cussed that was around them, Johnny would give them a black eye. I said, "Don't you ever cuss around him again." He's a pastor. They would introduce me. This is Pastor Johnny, and then and then I said, "You know what? That's wrong. Let them be themselves. Let them be themselves." I was doing it because I was a young minister. I didn't know any better, you know. And now I look back and I'm like, I did it all wrong. I want what? just be yourself, just like Jesus accepted Zacchaeus that day. Something happened in his life. Jesus came in and completely changed his life around. He had a new meaning. He had a new vision for his life. His heart was to give, not to receive anymore, not to cheat anybody. He wanted to make things right. Maybe tonight there are things in your life that you have not made right. Maybe tonight there is somebody that God is placing on your heart that you have something against for years, it may be. It may be. Maybe you don't even remember, but you remember. Maybe it's a letter you got to write tonight. Maybe it's a text you got to send tonight. Maybe it's a phone call you got to make tonight and say, you know what? You might not remember this, but, but you know what? Things have been changing in my life. That's your opportunity to minister. Things have been changing in my life. And I remember this and it bugs me. 
I want to ask you to forgive me for this. They don't, they're probably going to look at you like, what are you talking about? But you know what? God put it in your heart. Make it right. Make it right. Why? Because Jesus is Lord of my life. Amen. See? In his presence. In his presence alone and in his love, it's going to lead us to do things that we never could do before. I could never tell anybody I was sorry. I could never ask any. I ain't going to ask you to forgive me. But you know what? When we're in the presence of God, even admitting that we're wrong and doing the wrong things, we can, we can easily look at Zacchaeus' life. You know what? He took from everybody. And he was proud to take from everybody. But when Jesus came in, he lived a fuller life. Why? Because he encountered Jesus and he was never, ever the same. Salvation came to his house. God showed up in his house. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that awesome? And you know what? God wants to show up in your house. Amen. Even if it's messy. Even if there's things that aren't supposed to be there. Posters on the wall. You know, I know you got that Farrah Fawcett poser from 1979. Get down. Amen. Okay. <laughs> There's things in the drawer. There's there's uh, 25 lighters on your dresser. Yes, sir. Take it down. You know. There's whatever else in that closet that needs to be taken out. You know what? God came in, clean house. He's he's gonna rearrange things. Why? Because he wants to come and live in your house. Not just he doesn't just want to visit. He wants to move in. He wants to move in and be part of your life and walk with you every single day. I used to feel alone. Now I don't. Why? Because Jesus came into my life. Since Jesus came into my life, you know what? Things have changed. I'm not the same man. You're not the same woman. Why? Because Jesus came into your life. All he wants is you to open up your, your the, the door of your house. The Bible says that he, behold, he knocks. He's a, not, he's a gentleman. The Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He don't barge in. That's a devil. That's a devil. He barges in, knocks stuff down. No, that's not God. But God says he knocks. And if anybody would open up that door, he'll come in. And the Bible says he'll have dinner with you. Just like we're having dinner tonight, some of us, he'll, have, he'll sit down. You don't just sit down and eat with anybody, right? He wants to sit down and eat with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants to know what's going on, what's, what's really going on. You can let down your guard and say, this is what's going on, God. You know what? I invite somebody here to start praying like that. I told you this story a uh, few times already. When I was my first year in Bible school, I didn't know about prayer. But a guy took me under his wing named John Alonzo. And he said, do you know you can have a soda and some chips with Jesus? And we sat down in the prayer room on the floor and we just talked to Jesus. And I was just looking at him like, what the heck is up with this dude, you know? But he showed me something awesome because you know what? Today, I could, I could be in my car and I could be talking to Jesus. And people are looking at me, they just think my ear pod's in my ear and I'm talking to somebody on the phone. But they don't know that Jesus is right here with me. Man, isn't that awesome? Anywhere we're at. Everywhere we go, you're having it hard at work, get to the restroom, get to a place, go to your car, talk to Jesus and go back in there. Compose yourself, go back and take care of business. Shine like nobody's business. Shine. The enemy's going to come and throw rocks at you and try to take the shine off. But you can't, you can't take this shine off. You can't put tarnish on me. Why? Because I'm shining for Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm shining for Jesus. Thank you, God. Well, I hope that you see Zacchaeus in a different light today. I hope you see this story in a different light, not just a short man that was in a tree, but I, I hope you see as a man that changed and transformed for the better. And you know what? There is hope for everybody here today. There's hope for the worst of the worst. And, and, and his name is Jesus, and he can come into your life and change you. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for your faithfulness. I thank you, God, because you are changing us each and every day. Just like you're changed Zacchaeus' life, God, you can change our lives. You can change our lives, Lord. 
Father, I pray right now for those that are struggling, for those that think, I got to stop doing this or I got to stop doing that before I come to Jesus. Just let Jesus in your heart. Stop putting aside Jesus. Say, come in, Jesus. Come to my house the way it is, God. God wants to come into your house the way it is. And he wants to love on you and show you that you matter to him. You're not going to be lonely anymore. You're not going to hurt anymore. You're not going to be cursed anymore. You will be blessed. And he will change your life totally around if you say yes to him. God, if there's anybody here tonight, I pray that you touch their hearts right now as we pray. If there's anybody here tonight with every head bowed, every eye closed, and you say, you know what, Pastor Johnny, I have something in my life that's keeping me away from Jesus. I've made those excuses before that I got to change this or that, or I got to put this away or that away. But tonight, I want Jesus to come into my life just the way I am. And I want to let him be Lord of my life. If that's you, just raise your hand right now. Put it back down. Amen. Anyone else? I need you in a prayer right now. This is not a fancy prayer. All it's saying is, you know what? Jesus, come in and change me. Come in and be my Lord. Just repeat this prayer after me. If we can all repeat this prayer, that way nobody feels out of place and nobody feels embarrassed. If you can say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus tonight, tonight, I have sin in my life. In my life. And, the Bible says, and the Bible says, you, can't, you came to this earth to seek and save that which is lost come into my heart because I'm lost without you I don't want to feel lonely anymore I don't want to be cursed my life will be different after tonight be my Lord be my Savior tonight I will change because you are in my heart and you will lead me all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We praise you tonight. We thank you tonight. We thank you for your presence, Lord. Today's message, please subscribe below.